up, fellow dropshippers? We are live today for another Q&A about dropshipping, about eBay, about Amazon, anything that you guys have questions about in relation to that world, I'm here to answer those questions for you. So what I'm going to do is when anyone joins us live and asks any questions in a live chat, throw them up on the screen, answer them for you. But if you're watching this on a replay, ask your question in the comments section of any of my videos. I'll take a screenshot of it, put it up on the screen just like this, and then answer the question during my next live Q&A. So let's get into this first question. Martina wants to know, what about the returns from items bought with gift cards? So what Martina is talking about is when we drop ship onto websites like eBay and Amazon, we buy those items from other retail websites, websites like homedepot.com for instance. And when we purchase those items, a lot of times we use gift cards. There's a number of reasons we might do that. One is if we hire virtual assistants to help us run our drop shipping businesses, we will, instead of giving those virtual assistants our credit card information, we will instead give them gift cards and they can use those gift cards to purchase the items so we don't have to expose our credit card numbers. Great resource. So the question is, or another reason might be, uh, we might be able to get discounted gift cards. So the question is, let's say we buy something with a gift card and then it gets returned. What happens then? How do we get our money back? Well, that really depends on the policy of the supplier. So what I would recommend is that if you're looking to buy any gift cards for any suppliers, you actually contact them and just ask them that question. They'll tell you it. So for Home Depot, for instance, when you purchase items with gift cards, they email you a new gift card when there's a return. So for instance, let's say I have a $100 gift card and I spend $50 of that on an item for a customer, ships to the customer, then the customer decides they don't want it. So a return happens, it goes back to Home Depot. Home Depot will then email me a $50 gift card. That's the exact amount of the purchase I made. So that's what they would do. Um, so just ask the particular supplier and they will let you know. Amazon, for instance, Amazon, if you buy something with an Amazon gift card, it will go back onto your Amazon balance. Okay, so let's see who's here in the live chat now. We have Rich back, first comment. Thanks for being here, Rich. Jameson's back again. Thanks, Jameson. What's up, Mikey? And who's Sam? Thanks for coming back again. Jesse, what up, man? Um... Albert says, hey, Paul, currently watching you as I do Uber Eats, LOL. Hope you're doing good. I am, man. Way to hustle. That's awesome. You know, big opportunity for huge opportunities right now for anyone who's looking to make money, start their own hustle, their own side gigs. Um, there's a lot of opportunity right now. We talked about this a lot last week during the Work From Home Summit. All these opportunities with drop shipping, drop shippers making a lot of money. FBA sellers are now making a lot of money, too. Um, you know, YouTubers make a lot of money as more people watch YouTube videos. Uh, we also see anyone who's wants to get into the gig economy, you know, Uber Eats, Instacart, huge opportunities because all these people don't want to go to the stores. So they're paying other people to do it. So whenever there's a situation like the one we're in right now, um, there are opportunities. There are always opportunities to make money. So Albert, it's awesome what you're doing. Um, Wu Tang says, I need help with product research. So a great resource I have for you is underneath this video, um, in the description, there are a bunch of links. And one of the links is to my free eBay training. Check that out because I talk about product research in there. Um, the first link in the description of this video is a link to our new Facebook group. So when we hosted the work from home summit last week, we created a Facebook group just for it. And it was supposed to close once the summit was over, but I received messages from a lot of people who wanted to keep the Facebook group open. So we're leaving that Facebook group open. This is the first public Facebook group I've ever created. So I'm pretty excited by it. I'm eager to see where it goes and how we can all learn from each other in there. Yes, this YouTube channel is devoted a lot to drop shipping on eBay and Amazon, but we a lot of times have guests on the channel who talk about other things, right? We've seen Kindle Direct Publishing, Amazon FBA, Print On Demand, 
wholesale, flipping items, retail arbitrage, all these different things. So that's what I want this Facebook group to be about. Different opportunities for you all to learn how to make money prob uh, from home, working online. So right now, the name of the group is Work From Home with Paul J. Lipsky because the group was originally called the Work From Home Summit. I don't know if I'm crazy about that name, so if anyone can think of a better name for the Facebook group, let me know. Um, I'm really open to suggestions because I'm not crazy about that name, but luckily we can change it. So let me know if you think of a better name. In the meantime, join up in there. Great discussions going on, and I'll see a lot of you over there. But let's get back into the live chat now. Boom, says Fat Elvis Goods. That's all he says ever. <laughs> Uh, do you use any software for drop shipping? Yeah, I do. So when I'm drop shipping on eBay, the main software I use is called AutoDS. Now, the great thing about that software, it helps you quickly list items. It will reprice those items if the price changes on our supplier's website. It will also change the stock if the stock changes on our supplier's website. So it does a lot to help us semi-automate our drop shipping business. And again, I have, an, I have a link to them in the description of this video. That is an affiliate link, but I only recommend them because I personally use them. And I find that they are a very good software if you're looking to drop ship on eBay. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, is there enough stock in the USA. I think you mean enough products for drop shipping from US-based suppliers. Yeah, there are. Um, there's definitely lots of opportunity. I think that's what you're asking me, right? If there's enough products right now with everything going on, and yes, products are here. They are being replenished. So yeah. Hey, what's up, Hunter and Michael? I saw a question from... Danny, I'll get back to you on Instagram about that. What is up, Steve? Hussam says PayPal's, ooh, my mouse broke. PayPal's customer service phone number doesn't work right now. Yeah, so we're seeing the same thing with eBay, although you can get in contact with eBay. I made a video last week about how to contact, maybe it was two weeks ago, how to contact eBay if you had questions. PayPal, I'm trying to think the last time I contacted them. I don't normally have to call them very often. Most situations where you have to contact PayPal, we just contact them through paypal.com. It's very rare that we have to call them. So I haven't called them in a while. And so I don't have the answer to your question. Uh, I can look into it. But if anyone in the chat knows how to contact PayPal right now or how to call them, let us know. I would start by looking at why you need to contact them. If it's a case, then you can normally send them a message directly inside that case on PayPal. That's the number one reason that we usually have to contact them. And that's all we do. It's very rare we have to call them at all. Okay. How you doing, Paul? First time managed to catch you live. Awesome. Can I drop ship from wish.com? So that's not a supplier I've ever used. I've looked at Wish before to potentially buy items. I think the problem with them, if I remember right, they're usually like a fast deal kind of website. Am, am I mistaken on that? It's been a while since I've looked. So let's, um, let me pull up. Let's look at it together. I'm pretty sure it's one of those fast deal websites. So it wouldn't be the best because when those deals expire, then let's see, oh, I have to log in. Oh, all right, let's do it together. I will log in, use my Google account, get a bunch of, a bunch of mess emails from them I don't want. In the meantime, let's answer Adam's question. Do I need to report sales tax for every state or just the ones that I have a resale certificate in? For those states, do I file a $0 return or return for zero? 
Adam, you only are responsible for reporting sales tax to states that you have a resale certificate for. So if you don't have a resale certificate for a particular state, you're not responsible for filing a return with them. Now, if you don't have a resale certificate for a particular state, you might have to get one for that state. So it's a little bit complicated at what point you have to get it. And also at, there's also, um, so what I'm looking for, exceptions to that as well. So it gets a little bit confusing. This is why like, I have a whole module devoted to it inside my course, because there are a lot of exceptions and then exceptions to exceptions and the law is changing all the time. So unfortunately, it's not really a straightforward answer. And unfortunately, wish.com won't let me sign up for an account right now. I keep getting an error. So I'm not really gonna try to figure it out right now. But I'm pretty sure it's one of those fast deal websites, which which would make it not a great place to drop ship from, because then those deals only exist for a short period of time, and then someone might buy it from you, and that deal is no longer available. So, yeah, not a great place to drop ship from. Um, Blake wants to know which course is the best to take your eBay training or your Amazon. Uh, Blake, both of them are really great in my opinion. But underneath this video, I have a link to a quiz. It should be like the second link in the description of this video. Underneath the link to the Facebook group, take that quiz and that will actually, you input information based on your experience and your different circumstances you're in and it will spit out an answer letting you know which one's better for you, eBay or Amazon. Oh, Matt. Matt says, I missed the online, the work from home summit. Can I view a replay anywhere? Unfortunately, Matt, the replay is no longer available. The work from home summit was Thursday and Friday last week. And then I gave everyone the weekend to watch the replay. I even gave an extra day on Monday for people to watch the videos. But at some point I had to take the videos down. So Monday at midnight, all those videos were taken down. So I'm sorry, the videos aren't available right now, but we will be having a summit again in the future. So if you want to get alerted about the next one, you can just go to summit.dropshippingtitans.com. No www, just type in there, summit.dropshippingtitans.com. And that, there's a place there for you to enter a waiting list so that you receive a notification when we have the next summit. Um, is that your favorite shirt, Paul? I've seen it a few times. I mean, I really like this shirt. So it's, 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 a, it's one of my favorites for sure. I like blue, so it's one of my favorite shirts. Should I open a sales tax license to drop ship on eBay? When you're a new seller, you don't really have to worry about it, but you should set one up in the state that you live in. And that's all you have to worry about as a new seller. Uh, Shook ASMR says, I just fin finished filling out my tax exemption for California. Yay, congratulations. Hopefully it comes back soon so I can get exempt. Yeah, I hope it does too. Things, just keep in mind, things are slow right now. When you submit any sort of documents to the government right now, it's going to be slow because a lot of state offices are shut down. So you, it's gonna take a little bit longer than normal. So just hang in there. It's gonna happen. Just be a little bit more patient with it. Um, okay, Ventas 2.0 says, hey Paul, I made my first sale uh, drop shipping on eBay, congratulations. I pay with my credit card, but should I instead use gift cards? No, credit card's fine. Credit card's the much easier route to go as a new seller. Uh, keep it simple for now. Gift cards are something you can level up with later. Gift cards are great if you have the virtual assistants or if you can get the discounted ones, but credit cards are great for now and that's what I would use. All right, let's jump into the, the messages I had from this week. So this is a question about Amazon dropshipping. It says, if I open an individual account um, on Amazon, 
am I being charged $40 a month? How many products can we upload in the individual account? So when you start drop shipping on Amazon, you will have to create a Amazon selling account. When you do that, go with the $40 a month option. Do not go with the individual account because with the individual account, it doesn't come with a lot of the benefits of the pro professional account, the $40 a month account, and the fees are higher with the individual account. So you make up for that $40 very quickly by going for the professional account. So go with that one, spend the $40 a month, it's worth it, it's an investment, um, and it will save you money over the individual account very, very quickly. Oh, as for your second part of your question, how many products can we upload in the, in the individual account? I believe for the individual, I've never actually used it because I looked at it and realized that's not one that you, you wanna be using. But for the professional account, it's unlimited. You can really list an unlimited number of products. So I assume it's the same thing with the individual one, but, but uh, you do get charged for them. So um, you do get charged more for them. So just be aware of that. Okay. Let's look at the next question. Oh, this is pretty cool, guys. Look at this. This is where all the students from the Dropshipping Titans course are from. So it's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, a lot from America, so it looks a little bit crowded there, hard to see. We have some from South America there. Hawaii, Alaska, all over Europe, which is cool. We have India. It looks like Australia. And where is that up there? somewhere else in Asia, and then the, maybe like Southeast Asia. I'm not sure what's on the top right where that is. If anyone knows, let me know on the top right, but it's pretty cool. Okay. With the other payment methods, are we going to have to have payments immediately as we do with pay? Oh, I answered that last week. Okay, answer that one last week. Okay. Money Money says, hey Paul, can I have one PayPal account with two eBay accounts? Yes, absolutely. eBay allows you to create multiple eBay accounts and you're allowed to have multiple eBay accounts tied to one PayPal account. So it's not an issue. So Lior has a question about online jobs. Online jobs is the website that I use to find virtual assistants. So, we go on that website, we pay a monthly fee for it, and then from there we can post up jobs, and then we can respond to different different um, um, response. We, we, we get responses, rather, to our job postings, and then we can hire a virtual assistant directly from that website. Now, this is my preferred place to hire from because once you hire the virtual assistant, you have a direct relationship with them. You don't have to pay them through a website like you have to do with Upwork. So you end up paying less per hour or per, per month and the virtual assistant ends up getting more. So the question is, because I mentioned that you have to pay a monthly fee for it, Lior wants to know what's the deal with that monthly fee. So there is a free plan, free plan, but the free plan's pretty much worthless. On the free plan, you can post a job, but you can't see the responses to the job post posting. So it's kind of like just a, there's no point in doing it. You should pay the, pay the money for the one month. Now, the cool thing is you can sign up for one month, post your job or multiple jobs, hire the virtual assistant that you need, and then cancel your membership. And even doing that, it's still cheaper after one month than using Upwork. So it's definitely a better solution. Uh, question about using drop shipping on Amazon. Do I use Amazon's PPC? PPC stands for pay per click. It's basically a way to advertise on Amazon. So you, you might've seen this when you search for something on Amazon, at the top are paid search results right? And then underneath that, you see the organic ones. So we do not do the PPC with drop shipping. The margins just aren't there. It doesn't make sense to do it. If you had larger margins, like you might with like Amazon FBA or private label FBA, then you might want to consider doing it with drop shipping. It doesn't make sense. And it's also not necessary because with drop shipping, we're really going for volume. We're trying to sell a large volume of products 
And so we're not concentrating on just one product like you might need to do with private label FBA. Daniel wants to know what made you go the drop shipping, drop shipping route, sorry, instead of physically reselling items when you began. So I looked into a few things, Daniel, but ultimately what this came down to for me was convenience because I could do it anywhere and really necessity. It just didn't make sense for me to do the reselling thing. So at the time when I first started to try drop shipping, I lived in New York City, but I worked on Long Island. So my commute was about two hours <laughs> one way. And I ended up like multiple times a week sleeping in my old room in my parents' place because they lived about 20 minutes from where I worked. So I was constantly like half living in my parents' house, half living in my apartment in Brooklyn. And then even once I transitioned to the living and working in New York City, well, I had a 500 square foot apartment. There was no place to store items. I didn't have a warehouse, garage. I couldn't, you know, there was no storage spaces. So I couldn't do the other route. So that's why drop shipping was the only thing I really felt that I could do. And I'm really glad I did, Daniel, because I've also moved around a lot. Long Island, moved multiple places in New York City. I then moved to Florida. And now I live full time in a camper van and travel around the country. And that never would have been possible. Well, I shouldn't say never, right? I guess at the time, I thought that I would need a warehouse like that, right? I thought I would need storage space. Now, the reality is I know now that, you know, what a lot of my friends do is they get the items and then they ship them right to Amazon FBA. But even still, you need like a staging area to do that. You need a place to take in the items, box them up and ship them out. And that's still hard to do in the city. I'm not, you know, I kind of know it's an excuse because I know I made friends in the city who were doing it, doing it really well. But um, yeah, that was my logic at the time. And I, I think it makes sense. So drop shipping is just more convenient for the lifestyle that I'm in right now too. Can I start Amazon drop shipping even with the virus happening? Yes, absolutely, Takashi. So right now we are seeing an explosion in sales. We're seeing sales just take off because so many people are stuck at home. They have to shop online. It's they're, they're not allowed outside or they're afraid to go out shopping. So the better thing for them is to shop online. So we're seeing a huge increase in sales right now. Shook says, I'm still trying to understand informed and web scraper app. Can you give a summary of what each do? Yeah, so this is another question about Amazon drop shipping. This is the software that I use for Amazon drop shipping. So when you're drop shipping on eBay, we use one software pretty much to automate our business and that's AutoDS. Again, the link to that's in the description of this video. So that will link an item on Walmart or any other retail website that it works with, with the item on eBay. So if the price changes on Walmart, it will change the price on eBay. If the item goes out of stock on Walmart, it will go out of stock on eBay. If it then comes back into stock on Walmart, it will then go back into stock on eBay. So AutoDS does, does both repricing and restocking. Now with Amazon, when we drop ship on Amazon, same premise, we take items from Walmart and we're selling them on Amazon. But the software we use works a little bit differently. So the main software is Web Scraper app. So what Web Scraper app will do is if it, it links up the items, right? Walmart, eBay. If the item goes out of stock on Walmart, then it will put the item out of stock on our Amazon account, okay? If the item then goes back into stock, it will then put the item back into stock on our Amazon account. Now, if the price changes on Walmart for that item, then what happens? Well, then Web Scraper app tells Informed. Informed is the other software we use. So Web Scraper app will then tell Informed, hey, that price on Walmart just changed. So now you, Informed, have to now change the price on Amazon for Paul's account, okay? So Informed is the one that actually does the repricing. 
you might be asking, why is there this two software system, right? Why isn't it just all in one? Well, here's why. Informed, which again, does the repricing, is a software that's been around for a long time. It's used by a lot of Amazon sellers, not just drop shippers. So the way it normally works informed is that you have a product for sale on Amazon and informed will help you sell that item at a competitive price. So informed will look at who else is selling the item and for how much you're selling it for. And it will reprice your item based not only on your own criteria and your own criteria will say, I bought this item for you know, $50 and I, the, the least I can sell it for is you know, $80 in order to make a profit. Informed will then say, okay, we are going to price your item as low as $80, but we're not gonna necessarily put it at $80. We're only gonna put it that low if your competitors are that low. But if your competitors are higher, we are going to raise your price higher so that you make as much profit as possible. So that's the way Informed has worked. Uh, really powerful software because it's looking at not only how much you can sell it for, but also what your competitors are doing. So when the creator of Web Scraper app, which again does the restocking, found out that, uh, well, started, started doing this on Amazon himself, he realized that there really wasn't a good software for it, but he didn't want to reinvent Informed because it works so well. So all he needed was a missing piece. And the missing piece was, okay, how can we get information and data from like Walmart as to the price and then send that data over to Informed? Because remember, Informed is repricing the items based on your criteria. And again, your criteria is what's the minimum that I'm allowed to sell this item for? Well, we don't know that minimum because that minimum is based on what the price is on Walmart. So Web Scraper app will send that information from Walmart over to inform. So it, it's that missing piece. Web Scraper app is that missing piece to connect Walmart with informed. I hope that made sense. Okay. Eric says, Summit was awesome. Great job putting it together, Paul. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate that. I think it was a huge success. Um, okay. Uh, what's the website to become tax exempt in Florida? I don't remember it off the top of my head, but you can just search for Florida, um, you know, resale certificate, Florida, or look in tax jar. That's the resource I always use, and that will tell you. Okay. Jacob says, hey, Paul. I'm a member of your course and it's great. Thanks, Jacob. I would just wanted to know if I should use QuickBooks or GoDaddy bookkeeping. Thanks. So Jacob, awesome avatar. That's awesome. It looks like Boba Fett. Maybe he's escaping the Starlight pit there. I don't know what he's doing, but it was pretty cool. Okay. What software should you use for uh, accounting? Um, I used to be a big fan of GoDaddy bookkeeping because GoDaddy would automatically pull everything from PayPal that you need, but in recent years, I'm a bigger fan of QuickBooks. I really think QuickBooks is the way to go for any online business. It's not the most seamless. There, there is work you have to do to make sure all the numbers make sense. But at the end of the day, it's much cleaner. Your accountant will be much more grateful because QuickBooks is the standard. Everyone's familiar with it. So if you use it, they'll know how to use it. When I first started using GoDaddy, my accountant had no idea what it was. He didn't seem to like it, and I don't blame him, uh, something different. So we switched over to QuickBooks, and it just, that's that's what I would recommend. Hey, what's up, London? Don't use Wish, they're a killer. Shipping times will hurt you. Yeah, I think Wish, a lot of times, the items are just from AliExpress anyway. Okay, who's your favorite dropshipping company? AliExpress maybe? Um, no, I like Walmart and Home Depot. Those those two are my favorite. Saying the same thing. Uh, glad you guys love the summit. That's awesome. 
And if you all are members of the Facebook group, we're still active in there, so you guys can check that out. Let's see. Okay, Hussam says PayPal won't remove the limitation on my account despite me giving them necessary information. And um, what exactly was the limitation that they put in your account? Did they restrict you or are they just holding your money? What's going on there? What's up, Tommy? Thanks for being here. Um, let's see. All right. Another question we had. Answer that one, answer that one. Okay. Hey, Paul, drop shipping from AliExpress takes more like four weeks for delivery. What should I do? Customers want their items fast. Yeah, so with AliExpress, you have to put in the shipping policy that this item is going to take longer. You have to give them a realistic time frame for when the item is going to arrive. And if it's a problem, you can even put in the description for those items. This item is coming from China. It's not. It's going to come in four weeks or six weeks or whatever it is. You have to let them know up front because you don't want to trick people. You don't want people to buy it thinking it's going to come in two days because they're just going to get mad and they're just going to try to cancel the order at that point. So you want the right expectation right away. If you have the right shipping policy in place, you should be protected, but you'd also just want to avoid any issues with the buyer at all. So make sure that you have the right policy, shipping policy in place. Okay. Um, Z uh, Zineb says, hey, Paul, which is better? Drop shipping from AliExpress to eBay or just ship to USA or worldwide? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not following your question. Uh, let's see. Are cashback websites working? So we've noticed like a lot of the cashback websites have changed their percentage and especially with, with Walmart. And we're seeing all sorts of weird things these websites are doing. So we've been like checking periodically. We don't really rely on them because we've always found cashback websites not to be consistent. So um, it's always kind of like been a, a bonus for us. So yeah, it's, it's kind of stinks but lately that we've seen such a drop in them. I'm not exactly sure what the logic is about it. It must have something to do with, with the pandemic. Um, but we've also seen things like Amazon, if you're part of Amazon's Amazon associate program, where they will give you a percentage for every uh, sale that you refer to Amazon. A lot of like YouTubers use it. And we've seen a dramatic drop in the percentage that they give available to people. So I'm just on giving assistant right now checking. Yeah, it looks like Walmart's still not working. I'm having my VAs check every day and I told them just to tell me if it changes. Uh, Home Depot is still working though, and it's still 2%, so that's good. Yeah, but yeah, we've seen that with Walmart. I've, I'm assuming it has something to do with the pandemic, and the hope is that it will come back. Ah, okay. Now my mouse froze again. So, okay, let me go into this. Marvin, I actually don't know the answer to your question about AliExpress through the global shipping program, but you don't have, uh, I mean, what I can say is that when you're using AliExpress, you don't have to use the global shipping program. You can just ship internationally. Now, the truth is that I've never done that. I just started using AliExpress and experimenting with it late last year, early this year, and it, I put things on hold before Chinese New Year and never turn them back on because of the virus. Um, something I hope to explore more of in the future, but just not good timing right now. So when I started, I wasn't shipping internationally at the time just because I was still figuring it out. And so I never got to that point. 
But I do know that you can do that with AliExpress. That's one of the great things about it. Those companies ship internationally, so you don't have to use the global shipping program. You can ship directly to them. Um, let's see. We call that a hamper shirt. It's a shirt that never reaches the hamper. I clean my shirts, guys. Just because I live in a van doesn't mean I don't clean my shirts. <laughs> And for anyone who asks, my, my drop shipping shirt, I'm not wearing it today, obviously. The one says I drop ship on it. I have like four of those. So during the summit, I wore one every day, but I wasn't wearing the same one every day. <laughs> All right. So Michael, this is a common problem. So I'm glad you asked this. <clears throat> I've been watching your different drop ship videos. I'm overwhelmed by all the software, all these different softwares. Which is the best one to use for a newbie? I'm actually going to write this down. To act I might actually make a whole web page just devoted to software, software web page, like a resources page. I think that'd be helpful for people like on my website, because I know this is like confusing because I talk about all this different software and people are like, which one should I use? Very understandable, Michael. So part of the problem is that we have software we use for eBay and we have software that we use for Amazon. So if you're starting on eBay, you don't have to worry about the Amazon software. So if you're interested in eBay, you don't have to worry about informed. You don't have to worry about web scraper app. Okay. With eBay, the primary software is your repricing software. And that software that the one that I recommend is called auto DS that will take care of listing your items and repricing them and restocking them. Now, if you also want to do, you also want to do product research You want product research software. We use Zeek analytics for that. And we also use some other software like TrackerBot and and uh, Spot and Paste. Those that software is not necessary for a newbie. If you you only really need one software to start, and that's AutoDS. So that's the one that you should start with. Again, I have the link to it underneath this video. Um, but that's the only one that you really need to start. Now the next level up. I think most people should quickly get to using Zeek Analytics because it's really, really powerful, but it's not exactly necessary in the beginning. But thanks for reminding me about that, Michael. I wrote it down, so I'll make a whole like resources page. Um, and I think that'd be helpful for people. Any advice for shipping to Puerto Rico? Don't do it because most suppliers won't ship there as sad as that is, or it costs extra to do it, but contact the supplier that you're using and ask them directly because some will. And if they do, then put on your shipping policy that you do ship there. Otherwise say you don't ship to Puerto Rico. It's the Philippines, I think. Ah, maybe it is. Let's take another look. Hmm. Someone said it's Japan. I'm way behind on the comments. You guys are asking a lot of questions today, which is awesome. Taiwan, maybe Latvia. I don't know. Um, okay. So individual accounts have no limits in listing. That's what I thought. Same thing with pro account. But again, like I said, you have to pay for each listing 99 cents which you don't have to do for the, which you don't pay for on the pro account. So that's for Amazon drop shipping. Uh, let's see. You guys had so many questions. I love the, uh, the engagement in the chat right now. It's awesome. Rawls said, please tell me about YouTube money. Is it, oh, it's not about, is it true? 1,000 views equals $3. Um, it's different for every, every person on YouTube. So Steve talked about this at the work from home summit. Um, it's different for everyone, depending on your, your channel and a lot of factors. Let's see. Mm. 
FBA is very expensive up front. I know because I've done it, LOL. Yeah, you know, buying a bunch of items from China, private labeling them, putting your own brand on them, getting them to Amazon FBA um, does cost a lot up front. Now the payoff can be pretty big. So I think for a lot of people, it's worth it. You know, I've had some students who come to me and said they really want to do FBA because they like the idea of making their own brand, but they just don't have the capital for it. So they do drop shipping, build up their capital, and then use that money to, to launch an FBA product. So that's one of the cool things about drop shipping. You can start out with a low budget and then use that money to invest it elsewhere. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, so Shook says, how does informed know not to reprice it so low so you don't sell at a loss? So that's where, so again, we're talking about Amazon dropshipping, the Amazon dropshipping software. Informed knows not to reprice it very low based on what Web Scraper app tells it. So Web Scraper app will see that the item on Walmart has has increased in price. Let's say it went from $50 to $75, so now it's 75 bucks. Web Scraper app, based on the information you tell it, um, will then send that information over to Informed. So now Informed will then, based on the, the, the um, what's it, like math equation, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. So basically you enter a math equation into Informed. That's not, math equation is not the right word. I'm blanking on what it is. But you, 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 you set it up so Informed will then take that, that item price and mark it up enough to cover your Amazon fees and um, enough to make a profit as well. So it's not gonna price it so low that you're gonna lose money. So that's the way it works. Florida Department of Revenue. I think that's right. I should know because I'm from Florida, but I've only I was only there like seven. I've only been there for like a year now. <laughs> uh, let's see. I wish I had started this a year ago. Yeah, they say the best time to start a business was five years ago, and the second best time is today. So. Thanks for the summit. Thanks for being there, Pat Patrick. Um, is it okay if the, the box says Home Depot and Walmart when drop shipping on Amazon? How can I be sure they won't put receipts in it? Walmart usually doesn't. Home Depot won't put the price of the item in the box. Oh, the link below doesn't work. Uh oh. So I get I get this a lot where people will tell me links don't work and then I check them and they work. So I don't know if there's anyone who's like knows about that stuff and can tell me why that happens. Like do links stop working and then start working or is it because people are in different countries that maybe it doesn't work or something wrong with their their IP address or I don't know. I'm going to check the link right now on my phone. See the eBay dropshipping training free link, he says, doesn't work. So I will tr check that out real quick. Okay. Uh, do I need a, yeah, it, it worked. So I'm not sure why it didn't work for you. So I apologize. I, I'm not sure why that happens to people. I get, I get that message from time to time for different links. Then I click it and it works. So maybe someone else knows better than I do. Do I need a business license to drop ship on eBay? You should register with your home state, the state that you live in. Again, get a resale certificate with them. Uh, it's always a good idea to set up an LLC, but I didn't when I started on eBay. So and getting a resale certificate, registering with them is usually free for most states or very cheap. California is a big exception to that. Um, and it's usually a pretty easy process as well. And again, I didn't do that when I started. I didn't even know about it when I started. 
When a brand is gated on Amazon, do you try to get ungated? Yes. So there are some like shortcuts and secrets to get ungated. Other times, all you have to do is just click, I want to become ungated and you become ungated. So a lot of those, those ones that aren't automatic approval, I cover in the course as well. Do I invest in stocks or Forex on the side? So I don't mess with Forex. I've learned a little bit about it, but I'm not familiar with it at all. Uh, stocks interest me. I've been looking at them lately, but we just invest in index funds. That's it. I think I have like two stocks that are individual stocks for individual companies uh, that I bought kind of near the near the low point last month. Uh, but besides that, we just use index funds and that's it. But it's something I'm interested in, something I'm looking to learn a little bit more about. I uh, wish I learned about it like last year so I could be ready for the drop that happened this year. But, um, you know, I, I figure that investing in index funds, even right now, is, is a smart move. Buy them low and they're going to go back up. Um, individual stocks, I know there's a lot more potential there, but I just don't know enough about it. I don't know how to look into a company and see how... Um, you know, how good that company is. You know, it's very easy in hindsight to say like, oh, of course I should invest in Tesla and Facebook. But, you know, there's there's lots of chances like that right now that are, when we look at them right now, are risky because we just don't know how sustainable the company is. So that's why index funds kind of spread out your risk. That's why I like using them. And I like investing more of my time in businesses, growing businesses, uh, because that has given me the greatest ROI of anything that I've ever invested in. Um, Amazon seller issue. Started a new account for selling and they canceled it immediately. Uh, I'm not sure why that would happen. Contact them. Um, you got to get an answer as to why. Okay. Let's see. Oh, got it. Maybe that's what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> what is up, man? Thanks for being here. No, unfortunately, the Summit videos, the replays are no longer available. Okay. So I have two different courses. Oh, I got a super chat. Cool. Look at that in a second. So we have two different courses. One is an eBay course and one is an Amazon course. So if you're looking to dropship on eBay, take the eBay course. If you want to look to dropship on Amazon, take the Amazon course. Both those are linked down below if you're not sure which one's for you. The second link is the quiz. Is the second link the quiz? And the quiz will show you which one's better for you. Yep, second link's the quiz. Um, awesome. Glad you like the stealth course that's working for you. Let's see. Um, I think I saw it has super chat, so I don't want to miss it. How do you add her questions to the live view so quickly? It's the software that I use. Uh, it's called Ecamm Live. Uh, the, yeah, the AutoDS coupon finder is a really, really cool feature of it. Uh, if you're drop shipping from Amazon, you should definitely be using it. Um, really great little feature to drop ship from Amazon onto eBay. Let's see. Is it normal to be canceling orders? You don't, you never want to cancel. This mouse just doesn't work. You never want to cancel too many orders uh, because that doesn't look good for your store. So there are ways around canceling orders, but canceling orders do happen. It's, it's part of business. Okay. see 
Shook says, I wish we had this chat 24 seven because drop shipping can get lonely. If anyone wants to be on calls, let me know, especially for people just starting. So yeah, I get that. That's why I do so many live streams, but two resources for you. One, if you are a member of my any of my drop shipping courses, they all come with a private Facebook group. So that's a place you can interact with people 24 seven. If you're not one, one uh, part of any of my courses, the first link underneath this video is the free Facebook group. So go ahead and check that out. It's not just for drop shipping, but it's a great place to kind of hang out, ask questions that you have about drop shipping or anything else related to making money online or anything else we talk about on this YouTube channel. Sweet, I got a super chat that doesn't tell me how much, uh, but thank you, whatever it is, thank you. Uh, oh, it does tell me, RSD 200. Uh, it's not, I don't, I'm just not sure what that, how much that is. Um, <laughs> eBay money thoughts about promoting listed, uh, promoted listings. Promoted listings are fantastic. First of all, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Uh, we always use that to buy treats for the dog. Um, Thoughts on promoted listings. Promoted listings are great for eBay if they work. Now, unfortunately, eBay made a change. When was that? A few months ago that really screwed up promoted listings and drop shippers were mad, non drop shippers were mad. We were all like up in arms about this because it was just so stupid the way eBay set it up. It makes zero sense at all. So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the way promoted li listings used to work was if you had a listing up for sale, an item for sale, let's say it was this notebook, okay? Now, when you had this this up for sale, if someone searched for the word notebook, a black notebook, it would show up in the organic search results. If you also paid for promoter listings, then it would show up twice. Once, hopefully near the top for the, the uh, promoted listings, you would have your listing. And then further on down the page, in the organic listing section, it would also show up. So many times it would show up twice on page one of the search results. Not always, but many times. Now eBay made a change where they said, well, now you're only gonna show up once. So if you pay for a promoted listing and you are promoted at the top, then your organic listing will no longer show up. Now, if you weren't showing up as a promoted listing, then you would show up as, as an organic listing, but you can only show up once on the search results. And people are like, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense because it, that's not how they do it on Google. That's not how they do it on Amazon. That's literally not how they do it on any other platform. eBay's thought was, well, we don't want buyers to see the same listing twice. But everyone else is saying, but we're paying you to show us twice. Um, so what come, came out of that? Well. What we've noticed is that some of us were running promoted listings and as a result of it, our sales actually decreased. But when we stopped promoted listings, our sales increased. But for other people, it was the opposite. They ran promoted listings and their sales increased. And when they stopped promoted listings, their sales decreased. So why is that happening? It really depends on the person's account. So, and how well their listings rank. So if you weren't going to show up on page one of the search results anyway, then you want to pay for sponsor listings because that will put you on page one of the search results. But if you were going to show up on page one of the search results organically, then you, it, most of us saw that we shouldn't pay for promoted listings because then we would only show up as a promoted listing on page one of the search results, but we were going to show up on page one of the search results anyway. So you have to experiment on your individual account, unfortunately. That's what we found. We found that everyone has to experiment because for some people, promoted listings lowers them in the search results. I'm sorry, um, lowers their sales. And for other people using promoted listings increases their sales. So try it out um, for a few days, both ways, and see what works for you. Now, when it comes to promoted listings, before all this junk happened, before they messed it up, what we did was we just went into our promoted listings and for, we chose all our items and ran them at one to 2%. 1% was fine. So that's the way you do promote listings. You do it at, as based on a percentage. We just ran them all at 1% and that worked really, really well. So that's what I would recommend. Go in there, run them at 1%, see if that increases your sales. Do that for maybe four or five days and then turn it off and then see what happens with your sales and compare. 
Whichever works best for you, promoter listings or not promoter listings, that's what you want to do for your account. Okay, and thanks again for the super chat. Uh, thank you for your time. Saw you on Romer's YouTube channel. Awesome. He's a great guy. All right, I'm going to quickly scroll through these because we are running out of time here. What's up, Iron Ryan? Thanks for being here. How long after you started dropshipping did you get your first sale? It was within a couple of weeks, if not less. I'm not sure of the ex how long exactly it took. But I remember it was a Monday and I was at work when it happened. And it was an ice scraper for a car. Let's see. I've been kind of lonely. What's up, man? What's, what's going on? Is it because of the uh, quarantine? Is there an age limit for your group? Um, for the Facebook group, only if Facebook adds an age limit. I didn't set an age limit. Yes, we've seen this iron, Ryan. Um, I'm going to add an update to the course about how to get around this, or at least sort of get around this. Um, hopefully that updates out this week, if not next week. How many full-time RVers, RVers do dropshipping? I don't know. I've actually never met another one. I'm sure they're out there, though. All right. So, again, guys, check out the Facebook group linked up down below. Let's see if I have any more questions. I think I showed these last week, but it's always fun to share student results. Um, Angie had some great results, got 400 feedback. These are all posts from inside my private Facebook group. We have Arthur here who just hit $16,000 a month, $15,000 a month in sales. Another one of my students, Joe, $56,000 in sales. This one, student doing $9,000 in sales. This student, Lawrence, before and after, before on the right, after on the left. So I love that. No one's ever done that, like a before and after. It's really cool to see uh, how, how far Lawrence has come from... Let's see, when did he start? Uh, I can't really read it right now. But he's he's crushing it. So that's awesome to see his whole journey there. Muhammad, $92,000 in sales. This student doing $85,000 in sales. And this student, $6,800 in sales. So big props to all my students who are crushing it out there, taking advantage of the of all that's happening in the world in a positive way to get people their items, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, let's see. I'm a full-time dropshipper, yes, but are you a full-time RVer? That's the question. <laughs> okay. Um, Iron Ryan, two thousand dollars. Awesome, man. Congrats. Cool. So this is where we're going to close it out for the day. Remember guys, if you want that free Facebook group, link down below. Check out the description for all the links of things I talked about in this video. And if you guys got some value out of this, we have a bunch of people watching and only 22 thumbs up. So I would appreciate if you guys hit that like button down below. And if you loved it, consider subscribing to the channel. Do it from your phone and hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button. So you get an alert every time I go live on YouTube. You get an alert on your phone so you don't miss the next live stream. I usually go live every single Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Mountain, 1 p.m. Pacific time. I think that's right, um, generally. And But I also go live other days during the week periodically if there's any news to update you guys on. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe from your phone. Hit the bell notification so you get alerted. Otherwise, guys, thanks everyone who gave the video a thumbs up. Thanks for the super chat. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.